We have a water leak in this car. Every time you want to drive this car, after it's been raining the night before, you get in it, you go off of our slope driveway, and water has been collecting under here, and you get wet feet, which is quite unpleasant. Now we're going to find the leak. You know, I've seen in our previous video that when you move this car after it's been raining, you will get wet. So I'm now going to try and find the source of a water leak. This is fun. So when we get a lot of rain, the water pours into the car. So I'm trying to replicate that with a hose and keeping everything on the car exactly as it would be. So the scuttle, uh, the scuttle tray is in place as well. It's running the water to see where it's coming into the car. Now, I've established already that we've got water coming in through the heater, uh, through the heater fan blower. So yeah, that's one problem. We're gonna now take the scuttle off and see why that's going in there. Chasing water leaks is not my idea of fun, but if left without plugging the source, you can end up with mold, rot, and damage to the car. It makes the inside stink too, and is bad for your health. So to hell with the water meter, let's drain some reservoirs and find the leak. Whilst we have a small leak coming through the passenger side, which may ruin the suede loafers of whoever's riding shotgun, the driver is treated to a full foot spa during a downpour. So where is that water coming in? It's quite a lot sitting here. So one of the most common problems on a Mark II with a sunroof is the sunroof drains. Now you'll have two holes either side, runs down the channels and then it runs out the back, down the rear lights and out the bottom. And you've also got ones down the front as well, which run down the A-pillar and down out the floor there as well. So we're going to check those to make sure that those are actually working okay. Now, if it's going to be anywhere which is pouring in there from the sunroof, it's probably going to be that front drain tube. However, because the car is parked on the slope, that doesn't really make sense. So the only thing I can think of is there is maybe the rear drain tubes are blocked and therefore the water just sits in and then it just fills up and it's got nowhere to go apart from through the sunroof itself. We're going to pour it down in this channel here because that is a natural place where the water would soak through. The sunroof outer seal is not actually watertight, that's it is designed to allow the water to pass through. So let's replicate that. Probably end up with loads in the car. Like that. <laughs> there you go, so that has just proved that on that side the drainage is okay. It's pouring out where it needs to and it comes out there. Good stuff, let's try the other side. Whoa, 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 what happened? When did we fix that? Let's rewind the clock and I'll show you what happened there. The rear light surrounds on both sides were showing signs of blistering. So with my lack of bodywork skills, the R32 went off to a body shop. The body shop was a local place called Spray Shack and the car was in good hands as far as I was concerned. With the owner having old VWs in his personal collection, he knew his way around them. With the paint removed to reveal bare metal, it was more like to reveal air. There were lots of holes and the metal was too thin to work with to make a good repair, thanks to having previous quick fixes carried out where the area had just been rubbed down, treated, filled and sprayed. The same went for the rear arch area too. It was pretty crusty and needed the area cut with new metal in its place instead. Now when you get something from Dubstock, there's always a bit of excitement. However, this one, <laughs> it's not like a shiny, new part or anything. Oh, lovely. Yep. I mean, that looks good. But that is what I need because mine is rusty as anything, as you've seen. That's the bit I need. I've got plenty of metal as well. Yes, I mean, the dog likes it. <laughs> so I've got one. There's another one in there as well take them to the body shop. Yes, I know. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, 
cool, though. You said? The problem areas around the rear lights was cut out entirely. The cuts from dubstock were used as new metal. Always best if you can to source genuine body panels or cuts than cheap reproduction items that are so often made of chinesium and require fettling to fit. You may have noticed the classic Mustangs in the body shop, which gave me confidence the work would be top notch as these types of cars are high value items and I wasn't disappointed. Absolutely seamless and you could dive into the paint. The whole rear three quarter from the C pillar back was painted on both sides to blend it in, with the new metal brought right up to the original seam. Hopefully this will last another few decades or long enough until I've binned the car into a crash barrier on track. Now back to the checks on the sunroof drains. The same again, pour it down this gully, probably end up with some in the car, but as we've got enough water in there already, it doesn't really matter too much. Now if you do find that water is just backing up and going back into the sunroof, one of the best tricks you can use is a wire coat hanger, unravel it and just poke it through the drain tube there and just push whatever there is there. Or alternatively, if you've got access to an airline, use that, just give it a blast and it'll blow anything back out where it needs to go. Exactly the same for the front here as well. You can see drain holes are just in there. Again, what quite often happens is when the drain holes get blocked, this all fills up with water, and then these tend to rust and break off. That's why these are really expensive, because, yeah, these little nodger bits there, they break. <laughs> wonder why the car is covered in scratches, because those little blighters with their little tiny claws <laughs> trying to get grip. So that is how you check the sunroof water drains to make sure that they are clear. Now you can do that test as well with the sunroof actually closed because the seal around the edge isn't watertight. It is designed to let water through to go down those gullies as I showed earlier. But it is obviously easier to see where the water's going if it's open. I hope that helps. Now let's find the actual source of the leak. So a lot of the time what happens is these drain holes which are just down the side here, they block up with things like sycamore seeds and you know, just anything really, but they get fully blocked up. That quite often ends up filling up the water, pours down into the heater, uh, into the fan blower, and then you end up with wet feet on the, as a passenger. Now these ones, these ones look okay, um, but there is still water getting in, so I'm not sure why that is. It might just be the way it was, by the scuttle, <laughs> the way the scuttle was put on, that it was just pouring into the actual fan blower area, so um, yeah, we're gonna have a little play around, and see what's going on there. Now, because our car is parked on a sloped driveway, wherever this water's coming in from the front, it's causing it to collate in the back. We've got quite a lot of mold build up, and water then just pours in from the front when you drive up onto the flat surface. So. Um, yeah, we really need to find out where this leak is coming from to uh, prevent any more damage from happening to this car because that is just not good. It's a bit of a biohazard and <laughs> mould is not good for you, so... Let's get it sorted. The hunt for the leak continues until I think I've found something. Oh, I think it's that, you know. Oh, I think it's that. What is that? The hole so, where the cabling goes through. Ah, yeah, yeah it is. I reckon that is probably our culprit. So obviously we've now not got water pouring in. Let me demonstrate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
It's raining, it's pouring, the golf is um, very wet. <laughs> We've actually got a whirlpool going through that grommet. It's uh, drained down now, so yeah, uh, there you go. That is the cause of quite an extensive water leak, at least into the driver's footwell. So I think that just needs a new, better grommet, really. And a good clean up. Yeah, I'll clean all these leaves up because these are just asking to block up these drain tubes and then you're in more of a world of pain. And you know, there's an ECU cover, which you want to keep, you want to keep all that dry. Yes, they are weather, um, weatherproof connectors, but you just don't really want to be. It's electrics, it. isn't it? You don't yeah. want it to get wet. Yeah, you don't want to be giving it any chance really, do you? So, well, that's a good sign anyway. Thinking about it, it probably wasn't the wisest move to have done this without putting a bucket or something like that under where all that water was pouring out. But I didn't quite realise how much was going to come out when we started pouring the water in. So, but never mind. The carpet is original. It is 33 years old. And we've had a few leaks in this car in the past, so all the uh, sound deadening is probably well rotten in the first place. And the door cards, they have come off in the past and the membranes behind, although look okay, they're again, 34 years old. They are probably brittle and I wouldn't be surprised next time I take it off that the door membranes fall apart. So that is gonna be a job in the future to redo all of the door, door membranes. And then we'll wet back the carpet and give it a good old clean up and change the sound deadening while we're at it. Now, as well as the leak that we've got because of this grommet here, which is letting water through, we've also got a bit of a problem here. Now, this is where the fan blower is and we are finding that despite having the scuttle tray in place, we are still getting water pouring in to the fan blower here. And then it goes into the passenger footwell and drips through there. Not as severely as what is on the driver's side, but it still goes through. Now, here is our late style sc plastic scuttle tray. And as you see, we've got this bit here, which sits directly under this piece of the scuttle here. Now, what it's supposed to do is the water pours down the windscreen, goes through this little drain hole here, pours onto that, and the idea is it should then flow through this little hole down the side and out which would be around about here straight down the drain tube and out of the drain tube underneath the car however because of our unique driveway it was on quite a rearward <laughs> easy for me to say rearward slope the water unfortunately just seems to pool in this and then goes down there runs down the side here which therefore doesn't quite clear this part of the fan blower and falls into there. So I think what we're gonna to have to do is modify this somehow, maybe put just a piece on here so that it forces the water back through this drain tube here and flowing out where it's supposed to go. And also, what we're gonna do with this grommet here, we can either choose to replace it, but that does mean having to route the wiring and see where that goes. Or we might just put a bit of seam sealer around it. Not sure which route we're gonna go through yet. Now the easy fix would obviously just to be to park the car nose down on the drive. However, that wouldn't actually be fixing the fault, would it? So if I ever have to park the car with the rear down the slope or any other time where it's just on a hill, then we're gonna end up with the same situation. So I'd actually like to fix this properly. I think that would be the best way. Now there we go, we have found the source of our water leak. I hope that has helped anyone else with a similar situation, checking the sunroof drains and checking the scuttle as well. We need to order a new grommet because our one is letting a lot of water through. So, see you next time on Southeast Multi Golfs.